coconut oil. We're gonna turn this and this into this. I just wanna throw in a quick disclaimer here. We're not doctors. Uh, this recipe that we're gonna follow is loosely the same thing that you will find on the internet from a person named Chef Derek Butt. He was the authority on cooking with cannabis. It's really hard to find information out there about cooking stuff that's only CBD. You can find information about how to remove the CBD from cannabis, but by growing hemp that's CBD to begin with, we avoid all that step. So once again, we want to state this is pure CBD hemp and it's not cannabis. You could follow this. The same recipe, all you have to do is substitute this one ingredient and you'll be making can of oil. It's worked for us. We've been doing it a few years now and the oil works great for everything. It works great as, a, as an oil for burns. You can eat it. It's edible. Um, you can put it on sore and aching joints. It works fantastic, or at least it does for us. And pretty much everybody that we've shared it with, it's worked for. Uh, we make this at home. We don't sell it. We're not interested in selling it, so please don't ask. Uh, I think that would involve a altogether different thing, especially if we were selling it to somebody across state lines where it wasn't legal. Some states, it's still not legal, even for medicinal CBD, even though it's not marijuana. There's no psychoactive ingredients in any of this. It is completely benign. You could eat, I could drink this whole jar of oil, might give me the poops, but I'm not going to get high or dizzy or anything. Today we're going to make some CBD oil using hemp that we grew in our own garden. It's going to be some stuff you're going to need. You're going to need some way to weigh it. And you're going to need some coconut oil, some string, and some cheesecloth, some other little things. But those are the main ingredients. Uh, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to turn this and yeah, I know, it looks just like marijuana into this. This is CBD coconut oil. When it cools off to room temperature, it looks like that. Just like your coconut oil is white. Obviously, you can see the green from the, from the plant. Like I told you, you're going to need some way to weigh it. This is an old set of school scales that I picked up from a pawn shop. I'm gonna take uh, these co coffee filters because they weigh so little. I'm gonna put one on the scale. Doesn't even really affect the zero, maybe a half a gram, which is next to nothing for our applications. And I'm gonna start by weighing out some of this hemp. We'll go in half ounce increments at this point, I guess would be the easy easiest to deal with. We're gonna use, we're gonna be doing a quart of coconut oil and a quart being 32 ounces, we're gonna to try to go 10 to one. So what I'm gonna to try to do is put three ounces of flour and leaf into this 32 ounces of coconut oil. And you can use that later on to figure out dosages and stuff like that. Just as long as you know, it's basically a three to one. So I'm gonna set this to 14 grams. Make sure that that's working properly. And we're just going to start throwing this on here. Like I said before, it looks just like marijuana. If you were doing this, making uh, real marijuana or a can of oil or whatever, the practice would be just the same. What I found is, there's very little difference between the two as far as doing what we're doing. And there's very little information out there about cooking with hemp. There's all kinds of stuff cooking with cannabis. So other than a couple things, we're gonna try and follow the same recipe that you'd use for making can of oil, which is cannabis instead of CBD. So there's one half ounce. And we start that process all over again. 
We grow this stuff right in our regular vegetable garden with our vegetables. We buy our seeds locally right here in the state. So there's no legal, legal issue. There's a company called 207 Genetics. It's only a few miles from here. And they actually have CBD hemp seed available. I believe this strain was called Extreme CBD. There's several others called Dance Hall. Some other ones. This may seem like a lot of hassle. It really isn't once you're used to doing it. And you don't do it all that often. Maybe a couple times a year. So it's, it's really not that bad. Any of you that in your younger days might have had anything to do with marijuana... I realized, looking at this, this looks like a pile of substance to be going through. But when you grow it yourself, in this state we can have up to three plants in bloom at a time. So you can actually have quite a bit of this at home and not have any problems. So it's not like you're having to run out and buy it. When we harvest our plants, this is the stuff that you, you know, they're little tiny, little tiny buds that when they dry up, they're really not worth anything anyway. So we throw them right in with a leaf. And I believe you could probably use the stalk for the same thing if you wanted to grind it up. I've, we've we've to toyed with the idea of, uh, of actually grinding up the stalks and making a, a tea out of it and seeing how that would work. That gives us our three ounces. Now we're making quite a bit at a time. Most people don't make a whole quart of CBD oil at once, but it doesn't spoil. And if you're gonna keep it around, as time consuming as it is to make the stuff, you might as well just go ahead and make a whole year's worth while you're at it. That's kind of what we do. So the next part of this process is we need to take this fiber, this plant fiber, and we're going to put it in this blender, a food processor would work, anything like that. We're just going to put it in there by the handful, and I'm going to grind this all into a fine powder, all three ounces of it. I think you're going to be surprised with how little you're left with once you uh, grind it up. Here we go. That whole three ounces of flour and leaf is basically translated into one coffee filter. So once you make it all powdery, like the, it's kind of like the consistency of oregano, that's what you want to see. You don't want to see big chunks in there. Now you can do this next step before you grind it or after it really doesn't matter. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure you have to do this step anyway. We're doing this because people do it making cannabis oil or can of oil and I can't find any definitive answer either way as to whether we need to do it or not making CBD oil so we're just going to do it. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to dump it on this in this pan and we're going to spread it around. We're going to refer back to Chef Butt who says that you have to do this process which is called decarboxylation. I know that's a long word. They call it decarbox or decarb and that that's what you're doing is you're you're more or less activating it to let those ingredients work. So we're gonna throw this in the oven, 200 degrees for 45 minutes. So while we have our flour, if you wanna call it that, decarboxylating in the oven, we're gonna set up a crock pot. You're either gonna need a crock pot or some kind of a saucepan. I've seen people use those candy pans with the two levels, that works too. This works good for us. So here I've got a quart of uh, coconut oil. And we're gonna dump it right in our crock pot, make sure it all goes in there. And we're gonna monitor it for temperature. When it gets up to 200 degrees, we're gonna put it back down on low. I've only got it on high right now to get it up to temperature. I found that with this crock pot, low hovers right around 200 degrees, which is the temperature you really want. 
So once that's up to temperature, we'll move on to our next step. It's been an hour and the decarb process is complete. As you can see, this is very dry now. So what we're going to do to that is I've taken and I've cut about 20 inches of cheesecloth. It's probably, I want to say three thicknesses thick. Yeah, you want to be able to still see through it because you want the oil to be able to pass through it. So we're going to take that and we're going to dump it right in the middle. like so cleaning out the pan so this you want to kind of get it banked up in the center so you can fold it over fold this all the way over like that once take this side fold it over this way so it overlaps really good okay then we're going to bring the ends in Okay, do the same thing. So we're kind of making like a, a great big hemp burrito, so to speak. And then we're going to take some of the pieces of string. This is just regular baker's twine. It's actually, I think it's actually hemp, so that works out even better. And we're going to tie it much as you would, like if you were tying up a roast or, or anything else. You just want to make sure that you've overlapped enough so that you're not going to get any of your flour loose out into your oil. Okay, so essentially this is what we wound up with. Now the reason I've got that tied in so many places, I just want to make sure that none of the actual fiber comes out and goes into the oil. Okay, so now we're going to take that and we're going to, take, we're going to throw it in the freezer for a few minutes to a half an hour where it's nice and cold and that's going to help release the crystals that are in that and get the active ingredient into the oil even faster. This is a long process. It's going to, uh, it's going to have to sit in the crock pot for close to five hours before it's done. So it's not, uh, it's not that it's hard, it's just time consuming. Okay, so while that's in the freezer, we've got our crock pot warming up, the oil's in there, I had it on high just to get everything up to temperature and now I've shifted it back down to low because I already know what we're going to find. 200 degrees or right around there is your optimum temperature for this and I don't trust the crock pot even though I kind of do because I've used it for this a lot. So I use this heat gun and that's right now telling me that that's 217 degrees which is just fine. All right, break out our little frozen CBD burrito here. And in the pot it goes. I'm gonna take a spoon, kind of swish it around a little bit, roll it over a few times. I'm gonna let that soak at 200 degrees. Now what I usually do, uh, this is gonna take about five hours for this step. Now it's important to know that until you're starting this step right here, with the oil, with the hot oil, none of the other, none of the rest of it really matters. It's not time sensitive. You can get it all weighed and measured one day, uh, decarboxylated another day, let it sit, throw it in the freezer. How long it's in the freezer really doesn't matter as long as it gets lower to temperature. So you could leave it in there overnight. It still doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything. Everything crucial can be done in steps. You don't have to do it all at once. It can be an all day affair if you, uh, you know, if you try to do it all on the same day, which is what we're doing. So right now, I'm going to look at the clock and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set an alarm for every half an hour. So every half an hour, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn that over and give it a squish and kind of swish it around just like a tea bag. So every half an hour, we're going to do that under the heat. It's going to be at 200 roughly degrees, after it's been four hours, we're gonna turn the crock pot off and we're gonna let it cool on its own for an hour, continuing to flip at every half until it's time to take it out. What used to be white 
is now turned a nice shade of olive green. And you can also see that that oil is nice emerald green color. So now it's cooled off. It's been five hours. The next step, with clean hands, now that it's cooled off, you'll see why it's cooled off. We're gonna pick this up and we're gonna give it a good squeeze. Gonna try to get as much of that coconut oil out of this as we can without rupturing our burrito here. I think that's about it. Now that we're all ready, we got a jar ready. We're gonna dump that into the jar. You can see how green that is. Now, if you remember, we had a full quart of coconut oil. Obviously, we've lost some. Some is stuck to the inside of the pot. Some is still in the fiber that I threw away. And some, I would imagine, has evaporated. You can wait for as much of that as you choose to. And there you have almost a quart of CBD infused coconut oil. Ready to rock and roll. Now, like I said before, you can eat that, you can cook with it. It's good for a lot of things. We're not experts, we're not chemists, and we're not chefs, but uh, this is what we do. I hope it works for you. And check out some of our recipes about cooking with this stuff and uses for it. Those will be coming soon.